Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances and Mr. Shilpukar. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you all for joining His Holiness Chandramoli Swami Maharaj's daily call. Uh, today, uh, we are very fortunate to have Her Grace Radha Vinodini Mataji uh, to enlighten us on the topic of um, uh, the time. Uh, it's, uh, she has chosen the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto, 11th chapter, and uh, I forgot the verses. 8 to 18 to 20. Fourth canto, 11th chapter, 18 to 20 verses. Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Mataji, for your time and association. Um, you can please take over, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to uh, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so, yeah, this uh, topic uh, came to me because somehow lately I, I very much meditate on time, and uh, I think it's it's very relevant uh, topic for for uh, many of us. <laughs> and uh, so I I couldn't actually choose between these three verses which um, discuss the different uh, aspects of time. So I will read them and uh, then then uh, we will start the discussion. Uh, yeah, so I, I share my screen. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, just one more thing for me to be able to see also. Okay. It's taking uh, long to um, come back. Uh, anyway, I I just need to move a little bit my. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I I managed to do what I wanted. So uh, sorry. <laughs> I have everything. <laughs> Sorry for for this technical stuff. So, uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Saka Saka Vidam Bhagavan Kas Shatya Pravahe Navi Bhakta Virya. Parthaiva nihanti ahanta chesta vibumna palo truvi bavia. Srila Prabhupada's translation. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, by his inconceivable supreme energy, time, causes the interaction of the three modes of material nature, and thus varieties of energy become manifest. It appears that he is acting, but he is not the actor. He is killing, but he is not the killer. Thus, it is understood that only by his inconceivable power is everything happening. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Uh, the word uh, vibhavya means inconceivable by our tiny brain, and vibhaktavirya uh, means divided, by, divided in varieties of potencies. This is the right explanation of the display of creative, creative energies in the material world, we can better understand the mercy of God by an example. Government state is always supposed to be merciful, but sometimes in order to keep law and order, the government employs its police force, and thus punishment, punishment is uh, meted out to the rebellious citizens. Similarly, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always merciful and full of transcendental qualities, but certain individual souls have forgotten their relationship with Krishna, and have endeavored to lord it over material nature. As a result of their endeavor, they are involved in varieties of material interaction. It is incorrect to argue, however, that because energy issues from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is the actor. In the previous words, verse, the word nimitta matram indicates that the Supreme Lord is comp completely aloof from the action and reaction of this material world. How is everything being done? The word inconceivable has been used. 
it is not within the power of one's small brain to comprehend unless one accepts the inconceivable power and energy of the Lord, one cannot make any progress. The forces which, are, which act are certainly set up by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he is always aloof from their action and reaction. The varieties of energies produced by the in, in interaction of material nature produce the varieties of species of life and their resultant happiness and unhappiness. How the Lord acts is nicely explained in Vishnu Purana. Fire is situated in one place, while the heat and light produced by the fire act in many different ways. Another example given is that the electric power house is situated in one place, but by its energies, many different types of machinery move. The production is never identical with the sor original source of energy, but the original source of energy being the prime factor is simultaneously one with one with and different from the product. Therefore, th therefore Lord Chaitanya's philosophy, Achintya Beda Beda Tattva, is the perfect way of understanding. In this material world, the Lord incarnates in three forms as Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, by which he takes charge of the three modes of material nature. By his incarnation of Brahma, he creates as the incarnation of Vishnu he maintains, and by his incarnation of Shiva, he also annihilates. But the original source of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, uh, Garboda Kachaya Vishnu, is always apart from these actions and reactions of material nature. Uh, so the next verse, I, I think I will just read the, the verse here, uh, the translation. My dear Dhruva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is ever existing, but in the form of time, he is the killer of everything. He has no beginning, although he is the beginning of everything, nor is he ever exhaustible, although everything is exhausted in due course of time. The living entities are created uh, through the agency of the Father and killed through the agency of death, but he is perpetually free of birth and death. Srila uh, Prabhupada's purport. The supreme, personality, uh, the supreme authority and inconceivable power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can be minutely studied from this verse. He is uh, always unlimited. That means that he has no creation or end. He is, however, death in the form of time, as described in Bhagavad Gita. In Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, I am death. I take away everything at the end of life. Eternal time is also without beginning, but it is the creator of all creatures. The example is given of touchstone, <clears throat> which creates many valuable stones and jewels, but does not decrease in power. Similarly, creation occurs many times, everything is maintained, <clears throat> and after a time, everything is annihilated. But the original creator, the Supreme Lord, remains untouched and undiminished in power. The secondary creation is made by Brahma, but Brahma is created by the Supreme Godhead. Lord Shiva annihilates the whole creation, but at the end, he is also annihilated by Vishnu. Lord Vishnu remains. In the Vedic hymns, it is stated that in the beginning, there is only Vishnu and that he alone remains at the end. An example can help us to understand the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Lord. In the recent history of warfare, the Supreme Personality of Godhead created a Hitler and before that, a Napolo Napoleon Bonaparte, and they each killed many living entities in war. But in the end, Bonaparte and Hitler were also killed. People are still very much interested in writing and reading books about Hitler and Bonaparte, and how they killed so many people in war. Year after year, many books are published for public, public reading regarding Hitler's killing thousands of Jews in com confinement. But no one is researching how, who killed Hitler and who created such a gigantic killer of human beings. The devotees of the Lord are not much interested in the study of, uh, of the flickering history of the world. They are interested only in him who is the original creator, maintainer, and annihilator. That is the purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement. And the last one. 
The supreme personality of Godhead in his feature of eternal time is present in the material world and is neutral uh, towards everyone. No one is his ally and no one is his enemy. Within the jurisdiction of the time element, everyone enjoys or suffers the result of his own karma or fruitive activities. As when the wind blows, small particles of dust fly in the air, so according to one's particular karma, one suffers or enjoys material life. Although the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the original cause of the causes, he is not responsible for anyone's material sufferings or enjoyment. There is no such partiality on the part of the Supreme Lord. The less intelligent accuse the Supreme Lord of being partial and claim that this is why one enjoys in this material, material world and another suffers. But this verse specifies that there is no such partiality on the part of the Supreme Lord. Living entities, however, are never independent. As soon as they declare their independence of the Supreme Controller, they are immediately put into this material world, material world to try their luck freely as far as possible, possible. When the material world is created for such misguided living entities, they create their own, own karma, fruitive activities, and uh, take advantage of the time element, and thereby they create their own fortune or misfortune. Everyone is created, everyone is maintained, and everyone is ultimately killed. As far as these three, three things are concerned, the Lord is equal to everyone. It is according to one's karma that one suffers and enjoys. The living entity's higher or lower position his suffering and enjoying are due to his own karma. The exact word used in this connection is an anisha, which means dependent on their own karma. The example is given that the government gives everyone the facilities for governmental action and management, but by one's own choice, one creates a situation which obliges him to exist under different types of consciousness. The example given in this verse is that uh, when the wind blows, particles of dust float in the air, gradually lightening occurs, and then torrents of rain follow. And thus the rainy season creates a situation of varieties in the forest. God is very kind. He gives everyone an equal chance, but by the resultant actions of one's own karma, one suffers or enjoys this material, material world. Om Magyana Timi Randasya Gyananjana Salakaya Csaksorum Militam Hena Tasmai Sri Gura Venama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Sri Muteya Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Guravani Pracharine Nirvishesham Shunyavadi Prasyatya Deshatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Hatvaita Gadatara Shiva Sadi Gura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishna Yatika Vaishtina Tachana Nama Svami Nitya Nama. So uh, these, these verses actually speak about some, some uh, aspects of uh, how time uh, affects us, uh, who is responsible, what's happening uh, during time. Uh, it also speaks about the Lord's responsibility, also speaks about our responsibility. But uh, what uh, I was just uh, wondering, uh, what is the, uh, the time element here? So Krishna speaks about uh, uh, his connection with time uh, at uh, many, many places. He also speaks about this and his devotees speak about it. So in Bhagavad Gita, he says that amongst subduers, I am time. A little bit later, he says, I am also in inex inexhaustible time. Uh, one chapter later, he says, time I am the great destroyer of the worlds. So uh, these three times, actually, um, it's, it's there in the Bhagavad Gita when Krishna personally speaks about that he is time. Uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, it, uh, there are also a, a few... Um, connections between Krishna and time. 
there it said that eternal <laughs> sorry eternal time came from his eyelashes also at another chapter it said that <clears throat> eternal time is is your movement the devotees uh, say this to 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 krishna so so krishna krishna is time and actually he is uh, also the source of time so same and not same at the same time and uh, also i i collected a few verses because uh, it's it's nice to to quote the scriptures so uh here actually i, I it's not, oh yeah uh, the cosmic manifestation is separated from the supreme lord as material energy by means of kala, which is the unmanifested impersonal feature of the Lord. So it's very interesting that uh, uh, time, time is the impersonal feature of the Lord, uh, as it's said here. And, uh, and another, other verses mentions that uh, time is one aspect uh, of the Lord. And there is one, one uh, <clears throat> very interesting verse which says that uh, Krishna's weapon, this uh, chakra weapon, is, uh, is the wheel of time. Uh, it, I, I very much like this uh, description, so I thought I would share, uh, share this with you also. The personal weapon used by Lord Krishna, the disc, is called Hari Chakra, the disc of Hari. Uh, this chakra is the wheel of time. It expands from the beginning of the atoms up to the time of Brahma's death and it controls all activities. It is always revolving and spend, spending the lives, uh, lives of the living entities from Lord Brahma down to an insignificant blade of grass. Thus, one changes from infancy to childhood to youth and uh, maturity, and thus one approaches the end of life. It is impossible to check this wheel of time. This wheel is very exacting, exacting because it is the personal weapon of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sometimes the conditioned soul fearing the approach of death wants to worship someone who can save him from in imminent danger. Yet he does not care for the Supreme Personality of Godhead whose weapon is the indefatigable time factor. The conditioned soul instead takes shelter of a man-made God described in unauthorized scriptures. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it's it's uh, another topic. So it's also very interesting that here we can see that uh, time actually is equal to everyone. So so there is no distinction. The Lord is is equal to all living entities. The wheel of time is equal to all uh, living entities. And. Uh, and there are very nice uh, metaphors also describing uh, the, the work of, of time. So uh, it is said that time is like, like wind. Bishmadev speaks about this here that uh, uh, no, not here. Yeah, so uh, every uh, this is all due to inevitable, inevitable time under whose control everyone in the pla planet is carried, just as the clouds are carried by the wind. So this is a very nice uh, example how uh, how time works. So as a as a force which uh, moves things from one state to another state. Um, I I remember that uh, when I I started to learn at the university. I studied uh, computer programming, and uh, we had a, a subject called uh, theory of programming. And when we went for the first class, um, most of the students said that uh, oh, it was just like uh, listening to Chinese language. <laughs> we didn't understand the thing, but everyone remembered only one thing. There was one example of the chickens. So the, the teacher said that uh, imagine a big, big room filled with many, many chickens, <laughs> chicken. And, uh, and if you want to count the, the number of these, uh, these chicken, it's just not possible because they are all the time moving. 
And, uh, and if you want to count them, you just have to somehow, somehow stop them. You make a photo of them. And this is the one state of the chicken. And then uh, actually programming is like uh, uh, moving from one state to another. Uh, so so one, from one picture, the next picture, the next picture. And this is just like, you know, when you watch a movie, there are actually pictures. Uh, it's just very, very fast. And uh, that's why uh, all of us see it as moving. And actually, this is how time works. So there are certain uh, situations. And time moves uh, everything from one state to another state. And this is uh, described here also, uh, that like wind moves everything. Also, another uh, metaphor is like, uh, like uh, time is like, like a river. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it's uh, said it's like like waves. So here it's it's compared to waves. So oaking small as small particles of sand sometimes come together and are sometimes separated due to the force of of the waves. The living entities who have accepted materi material bodies sometimes come together and are sometimes separated by the force of time. So it's also a very nice example how to how to imagine uh, the, the works of time. Also uh, another, uh, sometimes uh, time is uh, compared to, 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 to a snake. And actually it's, uh, it illustrates another aspect of time that uh, time destroys everything. And we cannot uh, escape, uh, escape from it. Another example is, um, here, when it's uh, time is compared to, to a herdsman. Inexhaustible time, stronger than the st strong, is the supreme personality of Godhead himself. Like a herdsman moving his animals along, he moves mortal creatures as his pastime. So it's another description, uh, grabbing another aspect of time. Mm. So I, you know, I, I found this in, in these verses and I was thinking, Oh wow, this is so poetic. It so nicely describes how powerful time is, uh, how much we cannot escape uh, the, the works of time. But uh, you know, in in uh, in a practical sense, I al always experience that I, I'm just in a rush. I try to uh, challenge time, you know, fit as many tasks uh, to a certain time as possible and uh, and how how actually time works for me uh, how i understand it how how i am connected to to time so as i mentioned um, time time is just a force moving everything from one state to another and um, one it, it uh, a few uh, attributes of time is that it's eternal, trustable, it's unchangeable, it's uh, limitless, endless, it's the most powerful, and uh, it destroys everything. We can, can, cannot reverse it, which, uh, which is uh, very relevant because, you know, whatever is already passed, we cannot change. Uh, we cannot change anything, so we have to value uh, each and every moment. And uh, another attribute it is that uh, the speed of time is different in different uh, planetary systems. And uh, also sometimes Guru Maharaj used to speak about it, how relative uh, it is, uh, how we perceive time. So in one of these daily drops, he mentioned that we, we perceive time according to our consciousness. For those who rejoice, time is quick. For those who lament, time is slow. For those who wait, time stops. For the residents of Vrindavan, a moment without Krishna feels like an eternity, and any time with him never feels like it's enough. So it's a very, very beautiful description uh, and, uh, and very relevant to, to, I'm sure, to all of us. And uh, sorry for reading so much today, but uh, there is a longer one coming uh, because it, it so nicely describes um, uh, what uh, what is what Guru Maharaj uh, stated in in the uh,
sorry. So what Guru Maharaj stated in, in uh, this uh, daily drops and also very nicely illustrates the difference between, uh, between uh, material sense of time and, uh, and spiritual sense of time. So it's uh, from Keshava Swami, and uh, I would like to read it. Uh, I hope uh, not, not too much reading for you. So he writes, it's time to head back. I could miss the flight, lose my passport, and slip right back into Vrindavan life. Chapatis and dal, wandering of the holy tracks, immersing in scripture, singing into, into the early hours. We could, we could adapt the determination of the ascetics and old widows leaving Vrindavan only when the ashes from the funeral PR merge into the river Jamuna and float downstream. Realistic? Probably not. The holy month concludes and pilgrims disperse the temperature, temperature drops as winter looms and another year in the material world gradually winds up. Vrindavan, however, remains forever unchanged, steeped in, the devo in a devotional time warp. The singing goes on. The bells, cymbals, and drums steadily reverberate, and offerings at the rustic shrines, saturated with raw, unpolished affection, continue. Vrindavan's devotional fervor perpetuates day after day, as it has for generations. When you return, nothing's changed. All is gold, timeless, transcendental tradition. Those who recite here in spirit <coughs> live in the eternal present, oblivious to the ever-changing tides, tides and trends of the real world, deeply content with simple devotion in the here and now. How beautiful to live in the eternal present. I reflect on my own life, which for the, past, for the most part, is out of sync, eagerly planning for the future, <laughs> eagerly planning the future, regularly drifting to the past, but seldom relishing complete presence in the present. The self-development grows, highlight the power of now, urging us to check the overthinking mind from hijacking the opportunity to fully experience life. Good proposition, uh, but not so easy. The Bhagavad Gita reveals that it's not a physiological physiological, not a psychological adjustment, deep trick or technique that roots you in the present, that we are never sustained. What we really need is deep spiritual connection with the identity, life, and activities we have assumed. The real reason we glide to the past or chronically fast forward to the future is because the present hasn't captured our imagination. It's just not exciting or enthralling enough. The present is an anticlimax, anti and thus we restlessly gravitate to the past or future. We have to make our daydream our day job. Time plays, in our, uh, time plays out in different ways. There is clock time, consisting of, of the seconds, minutes, and hours which govern our day. Then there is biological time, our body clock, which intuitively operates according to its unique cyclical uh, pattern. There is also psychological time or the relative experience of time according to our emotional state. We have seen how time flies when you are having fun. The spiritual dimension, however, rests in timelessness, the eternal present, a space of consciousness in which we transcend every second, uh, every conception of time. In Vrindavan, we encounter an existence free from ethereal past or future. Though Vrindavan is undoubtedly a transcendent abode and earthly pilgrimage site, it's ultimately a mysterious space of consciousness. This magical space is actually the simplest and most accessible of all experiences. To access it, the aspirant must, must uncover their innermost authentic spiritual persona, craft a life in which everything connects to it and then fully embrace the opportunity to live it out. At that time, we drop time and effortlessly rest in the eternal present. Life's roles and responsibilities goes on, go on, but our consciousness rests in another dimension. 
This is the only way to experience the power of now. Thank you, Vrindavan, for reminding me of the eternal present. May I one day discover that life, that life in which I become frozen in eternity. So I thought it's a very, very beautiful description of uh, how, how we can perceive time in, in different ways, and especially the difference between material aspect of time and the spiritual aspect of time. And uh, I, I was thinking how I could really imagine how it works. And uh, actually, I came up with a, uh, maybe it's not a 100% uh, perfect um, example, but, uh, but I suppose it's, uh, it, it works out. So, um, the imagine a billiard uh, table. Yeah, like this. So here is this table. And uh, you know, the goal of the, the game is to, to push the balls into, into the holes. And actually it's a little bit like, like our lives. And uh, you know, these holes are the, the sense objects, the, our desires, uh, which uh, we try to, to satisfy. And uh, the boys are what, uh, which is possible due to our past karma. So, you know, based on how these boys are located on the table, you can, uh, you can push them into some of the holes, but uh, some other holes are not really uh, accessible. And uh, the way you, you hold the stick, so it can be in many directions, but the way you hold the stick, it's like uh, the, the material modes of nature which affect us. So it, uh, it uh, determines uh, which, uh, which um, holes we would like to, to push uh, the boys in. And actually time is when, uh, when the stick is pushed. So, you know, there are so many elements which uh, describe, uh, which uh, determine uh, how this game will, will go on. But time is just the force which uh, pushes uh, for, from one state to another. The exception, uh, not exception, uh, the, the difference, the difference from this game uh, and, uh, and real life is that uh, in real life, whenever we push one ball into a hole, then at least one another ball will appear somewhere. <laughs> so it's, it's not possible in a material sense to, to win this game. It's just, uh, it's just uh, forever going on and, uh, and, and that's it. And uh, actually, you know, the stick just pushes the balls, but uh, our responsibility is uh, where these balls are located and uh, how we, uh, how we hold the stick uh, in which way it should uh, push. So it, it also rem uh, reminded me when Srila Prabhupada uh, uh, sometimes mentioned that, uh, that uh, even in the beginning, he knew, he, he just considered that there is al already a big, big, big movement with so many temples. It's just uh, time is uh, which, which separate, separated him from achieving these things. And you know, this, this vision is like when you see the table and uh, you can calculate everything, how, how this game will go on based on the location of the boys. And, uh, and Prabhupada saw the out outcome because uh, he could see uh, the, the forces which, uh, which move these boys. And, uh, and the last, Last point, which I, I would like to speak about in this regard, because this, is, uh, this will be the most relevant for us, that uh, how, how much difference that there is for, for those people who just uh, want to push these boys into the holes and uh, doesn't really care about the consequences and, and you know, just uh, time carries them, but, uh, but they don't have any control which way they are they are going because the the material modes of nature are the are the things which uh, which just uh, you know drag them from here there and then another place but uh, for devotees is different 
And, um, you know, we many times speak about uh, how the, the spirit soul is uh, in nature, Sat, Chit, and Ananda. And uh, in a material sense, uh, if we don't, don't uh, live according to this, we don't, uh, don't, um, um, we just live our material life, then what happens? Then uh, there is, uh, we cannot experience this nature sat. So it's just a new course of time. We, we lose uh, everything. We lose um, our qualities. We lose our, uh, our possessions. And in the end, we lose uh, our lives. So, so we cannot experience this uh, thought, this eternity. We also cannot experience uh, this aspect cheat because uh, we, we forget everything we, we know, even during our lives. Uh, many times I, I have this feeling, oh, I've learned this verse and I already forgotten it. <laughs> So, so we just forget many, uh, so many things, and uh, we we forget all we knew, uh, everything, and uh, it's just gone. And also, we we lose our happiness, so we cannot experience this nature ananda, because uh, whatever uh, so-called happiness comes from uh, from a certain uh, sense objects. It's just, it will be gone because you know when we get this, uh, uh, we can connect to these sense objects. Even after some time, the happiness is gone. But uh, due course of time, we even lose the sense object itself. So, so we cannot experience uh, ananda uh, in in this uh, material um, concept of uh, of life. And um, just to to illustrate how how this works. Uh, I, I found uh, today, I, I previously I saved a video from internet about, uh, there is one very interesting uh, piece of art. It's a machine and uh, it's, uh, the, the name of it is um, uh, Can't Help my, Myself. I would like to share it with you, uh, at least uh, the beginning, because uh, it's very, very sobering, I, I have to tell you. So here is the, the, this is a, a robot and there will be some description on, on what uh, it's doing. In Sun Yuan and Ping Yu's can't help myself, an industrial robot turns and flexes restlessly, programmed to ensure that a thick, deep red liquid stays within a predetermined area. The robot is placed within a transparent cage, almost like a creature captured and put on display. Sun Yuan and Ping Yu programmed the robot and can help myself to keep the thick, deep red liquid within a predetermined area. This blood-like fluid continually oozes away, triggering the robot's sensors and prompting the machine to shovel it back into place. The artists have taught the robot to perform 32 different movements, from scratch and itch to ass shake, giving it an uncanny, mesmerizing human grace. For Sun Yuan and Ping Yu the uncontrollable liquid that the machine keeps trying to contain conjures what they perceive to be art's essential elusiveness, its defiant refusal to being pinned down and fixed in place. This led to the robots slowing down enormously and eventually being unplugged in 2019. In the end, the robot couldn't help itself. Should we really emphasize with this robot? Reflect on the rest of this video and let us know down below. So um, this <laughs> this uh, video is uh, about, as uh, as you could see, it's a, it's a robot. There is this uh, red liquid, and uh, the liquid is uh, continuously uh, flowing away. And the robot uh, needs this liquid, otherwise it, it will stop. So it's, uh, it's, for, it's needed for its so-called life. And, uh, and as the liquid goes away, uh, the robot is uh, slower and slower. And uh, it, as I read in the beginning, uh, while it's not uh, trying to get the liquid back, 
it it uh, also did <laughs> it was called like happy dances so it had its its movement it, movements it could do other things also but as it it was slower and slower more and more effort went into uh into just uh, maintaining itself so this is somehow how how time works for us so we endeavor to have some uh, enjoyment you know but uh, but in the end uh, we are just uh, losing our energy losing our facilities and uh, and and cannot really have the the so called en enjoyment which uh, we are endeavoring for and uh, the question comes if we can do anything about it actually we can because uh, many uh, verses state that uh, although uh, these uh, materialist uh, people they they don't have a choice they are just afraid of death they are afraid of the the flow of time and uh, just try to forget about the flow of time and uh, their inevitable inevitable death the devotees uh, are actually not afraid of death they the time factor has a different effect on us. So again, <laughs> the same verses. So here, uh, Kapila Dev speaks to his mother. Uh, and uh, he says that, my dear mother, devotees who receive such transcendental opulences are never bereft of them. Uh, neither weapons nor the change of time can destroy such opulences because the devotees accept me as their friend, their relative, their son, preceptor, benefactor, and supreme deity, they cannot be deprived of their possessions at, at any time. So this is one aspect that uh, we, whatever we acquire spiritually, we won't lose those things. So everything material, our, our wealth, our uh, husband, wife, children, uh, our car, our home, we will lose, we will definitely lose, but uh, whatever we have spiritually will never be lost. Um, that's uh, Srila Prabhupada also said that um, if we, uh, we succeed till 5% at the end of, end of our lives, then in our next life, we don't have to start from zero again, we will start from six. So so whatever we have spiritually, we will never be lost. Lost, and uh, and another thing is that uh, we know that uh, although time is uh, is so powerful that uh, no, it it just uh, defeats, destroys everyone. But uh, there is someone who is even powerful than time, and this is, uh, that is Krishna. And devotees are, are the friends of Krishna. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have to be afraid from, from our friends because Krishna is our, our well-wisher and he has the good intentions and also uh, he has the power to help us. And... Um, and another thing is, yeah, it, it was connected to our previous uh, to my previous point that uh, that uh, bhakti is something which is uh, not not affected by time uh, or by anything material thing. So so if we have time, if we don't have time, uh, if we are busy or or whatever, bhakti is not affected by these things. So we can uh, practice bhakti in, in whatever situation, and it doesn't de depend on any external situations, any external circumstances, not even time. So if our goal is to connect somehow with Krishna, then it's possible. There will be no possible obstacle uh, in our endeavors. Sometimes we feel that there is, oh, I don't have time. Uh, I have so many duties. I have so many. Sometimes we say we, we have so many services <laughs> and I cannot do this. I cannot do that. And uh, uh, Guru Maharaj had one uh, daily drops uh, about this. Uh, he said that no time 
Srila Prabhupada called it the disease of the modern age. Time for everything, but what is actually beneficial? Association with devotees, reading and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. So sometimes we, we consider these material duties uh, more important, more urgent, but nothing is more important or more urgent than, than spiritual life, than to, to connect to, to Krishna. And uh, sometimes uh, we, we prioritize in a way that, uh, that uh, instead, you know, we have, oh, I don't have time to chant, I don't have time because I have so many services. But the problem is that uh, in that case, uh, we, are, we, we don't understand the, the priorities properly because if there is no proper hearing, there is no proper chanting, then uh, our, our service won't achieve its full potential because in that case, how can we properly remember Krishna? How can we properly connect uh, our feelings uh, our, our devotional feelings with the, the certain actions which we are doing. So in that way, uh, in, in that case, our, our service might become just a routine or, you know, we, we won't be able to, to have uh, nice relationships with the devotees because, oh, sorry, I don't have time to meet. I don't have time to do this together, do that together. Don't have time to read together or, or uh, whatever, because I have so many services. And many times we can see this, the devotees are so, so much into, into what they have to do that, uh, that uh, nice devotee relationships, nice devotee, nice devotee associations suffer. And, uh, and, and that, that's a problem. So I, I also, I had a personal exam, uh, example uh, here because uh, I have one, uh, but th there is uh, one devotee uh, in the same counselor group uh, I, I go into in, here in Hungary. And uh, she became seriously sick. And, uh, you know, I had in, in mind that, oh, yeah, I should contact her and just, uh, you know, listen to her or, or offer my help, my support. But all the time something came up and, uh, and months passed actually. And, uh, and I, I met one relative of, of this Mataji and, and then I realized that, oh my God, it's at least three or four months has passed, have passed. And, and I, I didn't offer my, my, um, my help, my support, my love to this uh, Mataji. And uh, and actually, I, the problem was that I wasn't the only one. And uh, so, you know, there is someone who is seriously sick and uh, there is physical pain. And then this, uh, this, this emotional pain also comes that, oh, the devotees neglect me. I, uh, I'm not important uh, for them. Uh, they, they don't love me as much as I, I thought they would. And... Uh, we just shouldn't let this happen. We really should, uh, should give our love, our support to each other because, uh, because we have no one else. Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> uh, there is Krishna. <laughs> uh, he's he's uh, there even through the devotees and we have, we have the guru and, and uh, the holy name. But when personal relationships suffer, that, that can really, that can cause really big problems. Uh, for someone, so we should keep this in mind and uh, and just rethink our priorities. Not to be, you know, just um, in a in a an eternal rush, never never actually living, uh, never actually be being conscious about being being in the present. And uh, yeah, so our goal is not uh, not that uh, you know to do as many things as possible in a limited time. But our goal is to connect each and every moment with Krishna, because uh, if these moments are connected with him in whatever way, uh, then that, that moment is not lost. So uh, we, we lose time if, uh, if we don't use it properly. 
but uh, if we connect it uh, with Krishna in, in whatever way, then that moment is there in our spiritual uh, bank account. <laughs> I would say that. And, uh, and also there is uh, one thing which I heard sometimes, and, and it really touched me, that uh, when we, um, we waste our, our time, then actually we are wasting our, our guru's time. So whatever we have is, uh, is actually for our Guru Maharaj, our spiritual master. And, uh, and time is also a, a facility like uh, anything else. And if we are wasting our time, then we are wasting something which is, uh, which is uh, his, which is supposed to be for, for, for pleasing him uh, and serving him. So these, these things are, are uh, nice to remember. And uh, I suppose I, I finished now <laughs> because uh, there should be some time for discussion too. Uh, so please share your thoughts, your realizations. Yeah. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you so much. Um, a lot, many points you covered. Uh, thank you so much for the, uh, telling us the importance of the time um, and about these verses. And you read very nicely. Um, uh, who is that Maharaj Mataji? Uh, you read the um, document. Uh, I forgot. You read the trans. Uh, you read the document, right? So. Um, oh, oh, uh, yeah. I. It's a uh, Keshava. Okay. Uh, Keshava Swami. Keshava Swami. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mataji. Yeah. yeah. I can share in... the link uh, in the chat. Sure, Mataji. Yeah. Anyone needs it? Yeah. Thank you. So, dear devotees, any questions or comments or realizations, uh, you can please go ahead. Hare Krishna. I guess no more um, devotees doesn't have any questions today, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just poured so many quotes and, and verses on everyone's head that it might have been a bit too much. Yeah, so the main part is uh, how to manage time. Um, we, we, as you said, like we are engaged in so many services. Um, sometimes we think that uh, we'll be able to do a lot many things, but sometimes uh, it gets overwhelming. Um, yeah, suddenly things comes up and uh, we don't know how to manage time. So that's the main struggle, Mataji. For me, at least, that, that that's the thing happening. But uh, but suddenly we can't cut down the services also, right, Mataji? Um, what do you say? Uh, sorry, I, uh, we can't uh, cut down the services also, right? So um, sometimes uh, um, we'll be doing those services since long time. So suddenly we, we may not able to uh, stop them also, right? So that's the challenge we usually have. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, if we are if we volunteer for one for a service, then it's it's uh, we have some responsibility in that regard. I remember once I, I had a darshan with Guru Maharaj and I asked him uh, about, uh, about a service, a translation service, if I should uh, take it up. And, uh, and he said that, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you, you would like to and it, it inspires you, you, you can do it. It's just the main point is that uh, you finish it. And, uh, and it was very, uh, very important point for me because many times I, I, I had this problem that, uh, you know, I, I like to start new st services because there is such a nice taste in it and, you know, something new. But after some time, this uh, actually, this is sort of a material taste um, because it's gone. <laughs> if it would be spiritual, it would, it would be gone. So, so then when, when it's not so exotic anymore, then we just uh, tend to, to switch to another, another service. And, uh, and that's, that's not really good. So we should also, 
yeah, it's spiritual when we are doing uh, some some service, but uh, but the many times the material modes uh, also affect uh, these, and uh, we should endeavor uh, for the for the sattva guna, not, not so much the lower modes. That's <laughs> <laughs> not That's true. Yeah. So yeah, responsibility is there, but uh, also there is a trap. Sometimes I I uh, experience that I have this feeling that oh yeah, I do this service, but uh, but uh, there is no one who could replace me. And you know this is the, the trap of the false ego because uh, because if Krishna wants something to to be achieved, that something to be done, then then uh, he can he can arrange someone to do it. So so no one is irrepla irre irreplaceable, but uh, yeah, there is a fine line between uh, these things. Yes, Mataji, definitely. Yeah, sometimes we forget in the in the midst of all these things, we forget that Krishna ha Krishna is there to uh, support us and he he has his own plan. If we are not there, some somebody will take care of it. So that's for sure. But um, um, sometimes we forget and we we in anxiety, like whether uh, it will happen or not. Yeah, mm -hmm. good good, Mataji. Yeah, you reminded yeah. me. And and you know the the goal of our service is not something to be done, but to express our love uh, to Krishna. Yeah. And uh, when our focus becomes uh, the result to uh, for things to be done, then actually uh, somehow our feelings are, are might not be there anymore. And and the main point actually uh, is lost. I mean, not the main one one point is lost because still there is some effort. So it's not not that it doesn't have any any value anymore. It's just uh, it's just uh, the goal is to to also be devotional and to have service. So these these two things are both important to to have the feeling and to express the feeling. Mm. Nice, Matsi. Thank you so much, Liam. I'll I'll meditate on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Silpesh Prabhu, please go ahead. You have a question. Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, really Thank interesting class. Uh, I did miss a lot of it, but I, I caught bits of it. Uh, I wanted to ask, what, what happens when you have all the time in the world, but you don't have the help to do anything with that time? So like, you know, I have all the time to chant, but the help doesn't let you chant or do service or do reading. Then what? Uh... Sorry, I, I just repeat it if I understood correctly. So, so what happens if uh, if I have uh, uh, all the time, but but uh, the health health is not good enough to to let let me do these things? Mm -hmm. Well, um, as as it is said that uh, bhakti is not dependent on any, anything material and uh, i mentioned that time is is material but health is also so it doesn't mean that uh, that we should do the th uh, things the same way uh, as as we would do if we were healthy but uh, but uh, we can there are so many angles of uh, of uh, devotional service so if uh, Whatever is is there, if if we cannot move, then um, then just uh, just uh, stay in one place, and then yeah, we can chant or we can read. Or I remember that uh, one or two years ago, there was a time when I my nose was so so much blocked that it was really difficult to speak. And you know, chanting is is difficult when <laughs> when you cannot speak. And it took me uh, from. Uh, morning from 10 o'clock till evening 10 o'clock something like that to chant 16 rounds uh, in a in a way that uh, whenever I, I had strength I did it but uh, but then I had to to have some time to 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 rest so in that case obviously it's not chanting which I would try to do more but other things but uh, for example you know uh, it's possible to to listen to a bhajan kirtan or listen to a class because the ears are still there and uh, 
if uh, if someone is uh, cannot hear because uh, that does the half problem then uh, he can read or just uh, i don't know like smelling a, a, a flower which is offered to the lord that's also um, also a spiritual activity possibility to find the way how we can connect our time with krishna and uh, hearing and chanting these are yeah the basics but uh, but there are so many other ways because yeah if if someone uh, cannot chant um, because uh, the the throat is in pain or or nose is blocked or or whatever reason then then it's just uh, we have to find how we can uh, we can uh, still do something on the other hand uh, it's also important not to not to act like we are healthy so it's uh, when we are sick uh, that it, it's not a not a normal uh, situation so we won't be act the same way as a normal as someone in a normal situation uh, can do and and it's also not useful to to um, to blame ourselves in that situation so we just uh, have to train our intelligence to find how we, how how can we do something something spiritual how can we remember krishna um, like uh, when i'm sick uh, my problem is all the time that i i have this tendency that oh it's so difficult to focus so just uh, to put some you know watching some movie uh, luckily i i wasn't sick in the last few <laughs> few years so much but even if someone has this um, this tendency now there are more and more krishna conscious uh, movies also and you know if uh, just put something and and it's uh, it doesn't need great uh, focus like like you know a class would would require but uh, but still it we can remember krishna and that's the main point that's the most important point Thank you so much, Mata. You have really helped. It's going to help my day. Thank you for, for your question. Sri Devi Mataji, you want to ask a question? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, Mataji. Yes. Yeah. yes, Hare Krishna. Oh, okay. First, thank you. Thank you for a very scholarly presentation on different aspects of time. I was, I'm still meditating on the way you described it, you know, as a river, as Lord's chakra, as eternal time. And how time is so precious and connecting to Krishna every moment should be our endeavor. So this is actually what I want to ask because even Srila Prabhupada said one moment cannot be brought bought back for millions of dollars. So how we use our time in Krishna consciousness determines how Krishna conscious we are. The more time we spend in Krishna, it's better for us, right? <clears throat> but how to know? whether we are utilizing our time properly. Let me just ask you. I can settle down and begin my services nicely, setting up everything. Uh, and also continue with my therapy services. So every time so there's a house over here immediately i run to go and see uh, you know whether so, that's sorry, suitable uh, can for I, my can i interrupt you just a little bit because uh, sometimes your voice is breaking up and i'm afraid that i i won't uh, hear ha half of your question so may, maybe switching off your your camera would help a little bit yes, okay Mati. is that better yes uh, yeah yeah okay so what I want to know is, am I wasting my time by going around looking for places? And should I simply focus on whatever seva I have on hand and do that and leave everything to Krishna? 
or that would be you know being uh, uh, lazy and not doing my duty in searching a proper place i'm very confused about how i'm spending my time what i'm supposed to do because uh, my home is not just my home it's going to be my place of seva so am i running around trying to find a place uh, and is that a waste of time or i'm supposed to do that i'm i'm not sure what is the best way to go about it mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, i i hope i properly understood so uh, so you're trying to find a better place to 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 live at or and that's that's the question if it's a, it's a waste of time or Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a bit a bit uh, confused now because I I, I think uh, these type of questions you are more qualified to answer than <laughs> than me actually. Uh, I my thoughts regarding this is uh, that um, how to say. I, I can tell what, what I would feel in this situation. So, so it's not like our material uh, circumstances are not, uh, not important to us. I, I know in my situation that I'm, I'm not a, a, a um, pure devotee, which means that I, I need some, some uh, material arrangements which uh, which uh, help me to focus more uh, on krishna so for example if i if i wouldn't have a job then i probably probably wouldn't be even as focused now as i i can be so if there are things which uh, which uh, which disturb our daily routine the way of our of the wor works of our mind then then it's it's natural that uh, that we also need to have uh, some kind of material arrangements i also remember one thing which uh, which i i i i've heard from uh, chiti shakti mataji uh, in one of her classes but uh, when i <laughs> i mentioned it to guru maharaj Uh, maybe the context wasn't uh, good. Uh, he said something else, but anyway, I will tell you the whole whole uh, story. So Chiti Shakti Mataji said that um, it's uh, material and spiritual things are a little bit like uh, like uh, the the medicine and uh, and the painkiller. So when we are sick and uh, we have pain then if we take only the painkiller, it won't help to cure uh, from our, our disease. And uh, it's just help, help us tolerate it. But uh, that's the, the material solution. And uh, when we take the spiritual solution, it's like taking medicine, but don't take the painkiller. And um, actually it will cure us uh, due course of time, but uh, but it's difficult and uh, if if it takes a longer period of time we might lose faith that it's it's not working and i just stop taking the pain, uh, the the medicine so the best is to take both uh, both the painkiller and uh, and the medicine but uh, but know that the the medicine is the more important so this uh, made me think uh, that that we should also have some endeavor to to arrange our our uh, the the material part of our lives uh, guru maharaj when i i mentioned this to to him then uh, he said that oh just forget about the painkiller <laughs> so so he he didn't put so much emphasis on that uh, but i don't know if i properly quoted uh, what um, the mataji said Yeah. So, so based on this, I I actually think that uh, that it it can also be important because if our if our mind is restless uh, due to these circumstances, then it it can affect our uh, our spiritual life in a negative way. But uh, it's also important how much uh, effort and time we put into this. So, yeah, it's. Um, 
it's a tricky part <laughs> part of our life how how uh, how much uh, material endeavor we should do uh, actually when you will give class sometime i will ask it from you <laughs> maybe <laughs> Yeah, it is, a, it is a, a dilemma for me because, you know, my mentor says, did she love Prabhupada keep looking, you know, for how the room is and how the house is, wherever he was, he just did his seva. So wherever, yeah, we should just focus on whatever seva comes and do it to the best of our ability, which I'm trying. I'm not mm -hmm. refusing anyone who comes to me, whoever is asking for help, I'm definitely seeing them and offering the help. But the fact is, because this is a rental place, I'm not able to, uh, you know, put up furniture, you know, like how mm -hmm. doctor's examination table is there, all equipment is there, put things on the walls, you know, all the things that are needed for a doctor's office. I cannot, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, do it in a rental place. I would prefer to buy my own place and do mm -hmm. it properly in that place so that I don't have to shift again and again. That's my mm -hmm. desire, but I don't know what is Krishna's desire because he has put me in this house. Mm -hmm. So should I just make the best of whatever is there and continue and pray to Krishna to guide me? Or should I keep looking for a better situation where I can do it the way I want and, you know, uh, set up the home office the way I want? I'm, I'm not sure it's being... Um, too materialistically, you know, greedy for something better. You know what I mean? Or yeah, it is... yeah I, I, I think I understand more clearly now what, what you meant. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I, I don't think it's a problem. Uh, it, it, um, I never know, you know, when, when to give up and when, when, uh, when Krishna just needs some more endeavor. Uh, when I asked Guru Maharaj about this, uh, how can we know if uh, if something is Krishna's desire? Then he he said that uh, we should ask the Guru. So I I'm not sure if <laughs> he has anything to to say about this to you, but uh, I I don't think it it it's a problem. Uh, we don't hear now hear you now. You're you're muted now. I think you have said exactly what I need to do. Thank you for the clear cut uh, reminder that, you know, ultimately we have to ask Gurudev instead of speculating endlessly and wasting time. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thank you. I, I think it's, it's never a problem. I'm, I'm always so grateful to Guru Maharaj that he's actually so available even to, to these, uh, our, our material arrangements because uh, you know there are uh, so many gurus who have so many disciples, and and they cannot uh, uh, give uh, so much uh, attention to all these details. Uh, but uh, but Guru Maharaj is so available and and so helpful in in the material aspects of our lives. So so as that approach him with with these things. So I think it's it's. Uh, being a try because uh, because he will surely say something useful. Thanks. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Sipesh Prabhu, you have any question? Uh, yes, Mataji. I just wanted to say uh, the answer you gave to Sri Devi Mataji has really, really helped me as well. Uh, but, you know, we still need to attend to our material lives. And, you know, while we're taking a painkiller, the material painkiller, mm -hmm. work on the spiritual cure, that's that's really, really helped me as well. So I just wanted to thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah. I mean, just having yeah. everyone's association is going to turn my day around because I've had mm -hmm. a very low period this morning just because of my health. So I'm really glad to be here. And uh, I'll listen to the whole recording again later on on uh, Facebook because I did miss a lot of work. Uh, your talk so i'll be happy to do that and for sri devi mataji just pray praying always works you get your answer to prayer <laughs> yeah thank thanks you. so much for for joining and uh, and your your questions and yeah this uh, this part was also very useful for me when when i heard from from chiti shakti mataji uh, uh with so much with this thing uh, i had this feeling that 
many times devotees uh, feel bad when 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 uh, have some some kind of material endeavor and and oh i'm i'm losing my my wasting my time and it's it's not not proper that i i also uh, focus on material things but um, but uh, but that's also part of our lives so you know if we just uh, always go into the spiritual and and like uh, about material needs uh, then if i never eat because i always chant then uh, two weeks and i'm dead <laughs> so <laughs> you know we have to bother with these things but the focus uh, should be set properly thank you so much thank you scarlet mataji hi kishna and thank you for wonderful wonderful class uh, sorry that thank i you. have camera on i don't have cover on my head um the the thing is, uh, we sometimes, uh, I, I have learned about the, the soul and the mind and the maya and everything. I have learned, I try to learn more because there are no end to how much we can learn about it. But uh, what I wonder, I, I have learned that uh, beside the soul, uh, beside the soul that uh, control my body, uh, there is uh, Krishna's soul which is uh, looking everything uh, in, in the heart. But then there is the mind. Is mind have it own uh, soul which controlling or what is it that the control my mind? Is it me or, or the soul, uh, not the Krishna soul, but the soul that I get to pay any karma I have done? Uh, and Maya uh, control it, which one is it? Because sometimes I go around, for instance, I also go around and I'm worrying, oh my God, I didn't do this in the right time. I didn't do that in the right time. I have not uh, uh, yet uh, done my uh, rounds and so on and so on. But then sometimes something happened and my mind goes to that thing that I should, I need to take care of it before I do it. So which one is controlling my mind? My soul, Maya, or arranged by Krishna? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's about the hierarchy of, uh, of our different parts. So, uh, the senses are controlled uh, uh, by the mind, uh, and the the intelligence is higher than the uh, than the mind, and the soul is even high, even higher than the intelligence. And uh, actually, by by our intelligence, we can control the mind. It's like you know, uh, for example, I'm very to eating i like uh, these these sweet cookies cakes and and stuff like that but um, but it's it's not good for my health so i can i can uh, just follow my mind and uh, and eat the the cake uh, if i have one or uh, i can follow my intelligence which says oh okay you can eat this cake tomorrow, but now it's, um, I don't know, eight o'clock in the evening and it's not good to eat now or not good to eat two or three of them, just one. So that is what, what the intelligence say, uh, says. And, uh, you know, many people follow diet, different kinds of diets. And uh, there are those who can follow what the intelligence uh, say because uh, intelligence is just sometimes we 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 just don't bother with the intelligence but the intelligence has the power to control the mind and the soul is even higher than the intelligence but the soul soul's uh, role in in this whole picture is that uh, the soul can uh, can desire for uh, for things so if the the soul ha has this uh, mm, uh, if the soul wa really wants to connect with Krishna, then uh, then 
it can, uh, can have the intelligence to be properly trained. Because the, if, uh, if the intelligence never learns about different kinds of diets, then uh, even the intelligence won't be able to, uh, to control the, the mind. So based on, on, on the soul, the intelligence will go different ways. And you know, the intelligence is like, like a machine. Uh, and based on what you feed the intelligence, uh, the outcome will be something accord, according to, to that. And, uh, and this soul is responsible for which direction you, you train your intelligence. Uh, I'm not sure if it, uh, it answered your question or not. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, not, not on, uh, yeah. Not really. <laughs> no, not really. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, no problem. Uh, then uh, can you? Because, uh, for instance, uh, I, I'm an old lady. I'm, I'm an old uh, woman of six children. I have been very, very, very uh, diligent about uh, the controlling uh, my body, my what I'm eating, what I'm taking in the, in my body. I have been, I have so many pain in my body, that's but still I don't take any uh, painkiller uh, mm -hmm. because I, I it it uh, it's uh, defect affect my my head and I feel uh, strange. I don't like the feeling. All these things I have control. I I, I or I would like to think that I really uh, have something to do with it. But when I have learned about uh, Krishna consciousness, everything I read, it's pointed to nothing is on my control. Everything mm -hmm. is under Lord Krishna's control. And his sanction, if he wants it, something happened, Without anything I have done, it will happen. If something is uh, meant to happen and Krishna decided, yes, this, this should happen, this, this will happen to you. Hello, Mataji. Hello, it's, it's, Scarlett. It's almost Scarlett like... Mataji. I understood. Hello, Scarlett Mataji. I understood your question. Can I try a little bit on my side to try to answer your question? What? I, I don't know. I understood your question, what you are saying. Can I try to un answer your question? Because my next question is linked to your question itself. That's why I said. Mm -hmm. uh, then please, please share, share what, what you can okay. in, in this. Okay. So what she's confused is who is controlling my mind. Okay. Uh, if I'm not the controller and if uh, Krishna is all doing everything, but then who is controlling? Now, her question is perfectly correct. See, actually, our mind, uh, our soul doesn't do anything, okay? Soul doesn't do anything other than just observer. Soul is just an observer. Okay? Scarlett Mataji, did you get that first point? This is my understanding I'm telling, okay? Uh, you can correct me. Anybody can correct me if I'm wrong. So soul, uh, even our jiva, individual soul doesn't do anything. And Paramatma... That is completely wrong. The soul is ever active. It never stops being active. It is not in no, no, no. dormant. It is not, no. not just lying there and doing nothing. Let me, let me finish, Sri Devi Mataji. Soul. Soul is not active in that way, okay? Soul is just an observer. Jiva is also an observer. Okay, who, are, who is doing the activity? We are not the doers. Soul is not the doer. First thing. So activity is not so done by the soul. Where I got all this information, my dear Subhya, that the soul is not active, the soul is not the doer. So where you have got all this information? Which asks no. you are quoting the back you up? Bhagavad Gita itself says we are not the doer. Only the, we think that we are the doers. And that's why Ankarasmi Murasma Kartasma, something is like that, right? No, no, Bhagavad Gita doesn't say that, that we are, I mean, says that we are not the doer in one sense, but actually Bhagavad Gita says that there are three doers, and we are one of those doers, uh, no, because no, no, no. Uh, let, three doers let, are the, 
this super soul which uh, sanctifies the material modes of nature which carry out the desires what we the, what we do mataji is prakriti is our our nature it's not the part of our soul what, what we do sorry i didn't what we do what we think is we are I'm so sorry i have to leave now i have a i have a client on session so i have to leave this discussion please forgive me okay uh, let me continue what jiva does when we say we are doer we are not the doer we as in soul is not the doer okay uh, jiva has a two parts soul plus prakriti prakriti consists of a body and a mind body mind intelligence and ego this is the part of the prakriti of jiva and also jiva has a soul these are the two factors of the soul till that everyone is on the same line right so jiva has a soul plus subtle body which is mind intelligence and ego and gross body which is made up of mahat tatva that is earth fire water element uh, all these elements okay so soul is just an even individual jiva soul is observer it doesn't do anything okay who is doing subtle body and the gross body does all the action Okay, that's why we say we are not the doers. Hare Krishna, Supriya Mataji. Um, got your point, but um, I think uh, if you let uh, Radha Vinodini Mataji speak about this question, uh, that will be nice uh, because uh, we have to give um, respect to the speaker on the class, Mataji. Okay, uh, thank you so much for sharing your points, but I don't know how much valid are they are uh, because uh, we have to speak from the shastra. Um, we have to check ourselves. So, sorry to interrupt you. Um, I just request you to let uh, Radha Vinodini Mataji speak. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I'm a little bit confused because I, I, I lost what, what was the focus of all, all of this. Um, yes, Mataji, yeah. It is uh, according to Shastra itself. It's not out of Shastra. But the thing is that when we say we are the doers, then that th everything goes wrong. If you are the doer, then what the soul is doing? Because in the Bhagavad Gita itself, it's given. Something. Do I am the doer itself? That's what the Muda says. Yes, Mataji. So, Radha Vinodri Mataji, you want to comment on that? <laughs> no, I'm not really. I I really lost focus of of uh, the point of uh, this question. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's okay, Mataji. Uh, we can continue. Uh, Scarlet Mataji, you can ask this question to Guru Maharaj. Um, oh. so, and you can oh, get sorry. the clarification. Please forgive okay. me if you, if you, if I have caused any problem in the program. Please forgive me. That's it's okay. Not Mataji. my intention. I, I just please, want um, to... Okay. Yeah, please uh, really ask no this problem. question to Maharaj uh, once he joins. Yes, thank you very much. Friday. Um, thank you so much. Um, okay, Mataji, it's been uh, like one and a half hour. Uh, we can end the call mm -hmm. here. Thank you so much, uh, Mataji. I'm okay. sorry for the inconvenience caused, uh, Mataji. Um, no, sorry, I, I wasn't wasn't able to. Oh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I was just trying to. I'm I was so, just so trying sorry. To please forgive me. Yeah, I was just trying to listen what she was saying and then I wanted to talk in between. But uh, yeah, uh, that's fine. Okay, thank you so much, Mataji, uh, for your time and association. Hope you'll uh, give more classes for all of us again. Mm, thank you so much, devotees. Uh, we'll end the call here. Thank you. 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 Thank